With the implementation of the Chinese Communist Party's Hong Kong national security law, Hong Kong, once a global financial center, is rapidly losing its free environment. The global banking industry is scaling back office space in the country's expensive business district, causing concerns for capital flowing out of Hong Kong. Many residents are also considering emigrating elsewhere. Meanwhile, Chinese institutions are expanding substantially, and a massive amount of mainland capital is pouring into the Hong Kong real estate and financial markets. These moves show that the CCP is accelerating the mainlandization of Hong Kong in an attempt to take full control of the territory in the future. Among all the changes taking place in Hong Kong, a mainland real estate company with a deep communist background, the Kaiser Group, has not only purchased land to expand its operations, but has also bought Hong Kong media coverage in order to attract public attention. Headquartered in Shenzhen, the Kaiser Group was co-founded by Guo Yingchen and his two brothers in 1999, and quickly began renovation projects such as revitalizing old buildings. Most of their work is based in Shenzhen, with a small number of them in Guangzhou, Zhuhai, and other cities. The renovation of old urban areas is one of the most profitable types of projects in mainland China, and involves the most collusion between government officials and businesses. Only developers who can befriend powerful officials can profit from the business. The Kaiser Group was listed in Hong Kong in 2009, and in 2020, the Kaiser Group ranked 25th in their contract sales. Hong Kong media calls the Guo brothers the Invisible Tycoons because although the Kaiser Group is nominally a private enterprise, its deep political background in mainland China has led the brothers to quickly become some of the top tycoons in Hong Kong. This way, they not only have a lot of respect in the Hong Kong business community, but can also easily play their tricks. On the day of its listing in Hong Kong, the heads of Sunrise Group, Chao Tai Fook. Emperor Group, Centerline Property, and other top tycoons all attended to congratulate and show their support for the Kaiser Group. Some of these individuals also purchased a total of sixty million dollars in stock as underlying investors. The Kaiser Group also obtained investments from Temasek and the Carlyle Group, while Li Keqing's Chengkong Holdings holds its high-interest notes, and Henderson Land's chairman Li Shaqi also invested. In recent years, the Kaiser Group has been developing in the mainland. When it entered the Hong Kong residential market for the first time last year, it had already made a 7.1 billion yuan purchase of four parcels of land. This includes the Tunmen project for 3.185 billion yuan back in January, the Sai Wan project for 500 million yuan in May, a 75% interest in the Chengsha Wan project for 239 million yuan in October, and a 50% interest in the Kai Tak project for 3.203 billion yuan in November. The Kaiser Group's major investment expansion in Hong Kong has attracted considerable attention. This is especially so since, in addition to real estate, it has also acquired a controlling stake in Xintao News Group, one of the highest circulation newspapers in Hong Kong. On January 28 this year, 27-year-old Guo Xiaoting, daughter of the group's chairman Guo Yingchen, became the largest single shareholder of Xintao by purchasing a 28% stake in the group for a total price of 370 million Hong Kong dollars, or 48 million U.S. dollars. In contrast, Xintao Chairman Ho Chu Kwok's shareholding dropped from 31.37 percent to 3.37 percent. Although Guo Xiaoting publicly stated that the acquisition of Xintao is purely a personal investment, the outside world believes that her investment in Hong Kong has both commercial considerations and political implications because of the Kaiser Group's numerous political ties. Since the Kaiser Group has close ties to the CCP's political and legal committee system, it became implicated and suffered a setback when the former political and legal committee secretary Zhou Yongkang was purged in 2014. In July 2014, after it was announced that Zhou Yongkang was under investigation, Cai Xing's New Century magazine published a lengthy report. It alleged that the Zhongxu Department, which was founded by his eldest son's mother-in-law and his eldest son, had at one point joint ventures with the Kaiser Group and the Fantasia Holdings Group, both of which are mainland real estate companies listed in the Hong Kong market, and their land reserves reached thousands of acres. Zheng Baobao, 
the owner of the Fantasia Holdings Group, is the niece of former CCP Vice Chairman Zheng Qinghong, and Zheng Qinghong was Jiang's number two during his time in power with the CCP. The Guo brothers also had a close relationship with Jiang Zunyu, the former secretary of the Shenzhen Political and Legal Committee, who later fell from power due to corruption. At the end of November in 2014, the Kaiser Group's thousands of real estate properties in Shenzhen were targeted by the Shenzhen government. A few days later, the company suddenly suspended trading, followed by their boss Guo Yingchen's resignation due to health reasons. Since its cash flow was drained, the group became the first Chinese real estate company to default on dollar bonds. From 2015 to 2016, the company defaulted on at least six offshore bonds, summing up to a total of $2.5 billion. Fortunately for him, Guo Yingchen was able to return to Hong Kong and come out of his predicament two years later with the help of some wealthy Hong Kong businessmen. Guo Yingchen, the owner of the Kaiser Group, was also involved with the United Front Work Department of the CCP and is active in the United Front Work Circle in Shenzhen. The United Front Work Department of the CCP in Shenzhen also led the establishment of the One Heart Club in September 2012, and most of its members are wealthy businessmen with close ties to the CCP's Jiang faction, with Guo Yingchen being one of them. As early as October 15, 2009, the Kaiser Group made a significant donation of 2 million yuan to the office of the Shenzhen Care and Concern Association. Also known as the Shenzhen Care Office, it is in fact the upper level of the Hong Kong Youth Care Association, a CCP-affiliated organization. The so-called Care Association, headed by Secretary of the Political and Legal Committee Zhou Yongkang, was a civil institution established in order to persecute Falun Gong. For years, Hong Kong had been in the hands of Zheng Qinghong. Sources state that from the violent suppression of the Hong Kong anti-extradition movement to the 2020 forced implementation of the Hong Kong national security law and continued unrest, the commander-in-chief behind the scenes has always been Zheng Qinghong. Additionally, the long-term vandalization, harassment, and attacks on Falun Gong practitioners' clarification activities by the Youth Care Association were indirectly funded by the wealthy Hong Kong tycoons who supported the Kaiser Group and the Fantasia Holdings Group, and who also have close ties with Zheng Qinghong and Chief Executive Leng Chengying from the Jiang faction. The Kaiser Group is just a typical example of the huge influx of Chinese companies into Hong Kong. At the current standpoint, using mainland Chinese companies to penetrate Hong Kong on all fronts and taking a dominant position is one of the strategies employed by the CCP. If Chinese corporations were to continue to expand their presence in Hong Kong, it is conceivable that the degree of Chinese control over the Hong Kong economy will inevitably increase over time. For example, in the real estate sector, a report released last August by Colliers International Inc. shows that since July 1999, mainland-backed developers have won bids for six of the 13 sites in Hong Kong, covering 60% of the total investment on all the sites. Meanwhile, almost all of Hong Kong's cross-border real estate transactions come from mainland Chinese investors. And as of August 2020, capital from mainland China has accounted for 98% of total real estate investment in Hong Kong, up from 61% in 2019. According to a document from Savile's real estate company, Chinese companies are also currently leasing up to 30% of all top commercial office space in central Hong Kong. In the financial sector, an unprecedented 98% of newly listed shares in Hong Kong last year came from Chinese companies. With the entry of Ali, Xiaomi, and Meituan into the Hang Seng Index, or the HSI, the weight of Chinese capital in the HSI has exceeded 60%. Many believe that the voice of Hong Kong capital in the capital market will definitely weaken, and in the long run, the Hong Kong stock market will likely become a capital-raising platform for mainly Chinese-funded companies. That's not all. While expanding the real estate and economic sectors, the CCP hasn't forgotten to lay out the path for propaganda and public opinion control. It's become obvious to the public that the Kaiser Holdings Group's motive for everything from engaging in the real estate sector to intervening with the media to obtaining the controlling stake of Xingtao Holdings Group has been to gain dominance in Hong Kong. In addition, the CCP-controlled businessmen's eagerness to invest in the news media industry will also pave the way for the CCP to exercise comprehensive control over Hong Kong.